CKD is one of the most common diagnoses that we make in our clinical practice. Very common in middle-aged and elderly cats in particular. And for example, one study showed that about a third of cats over the age of 15 have this condition. Unfortunately, the signs of CKD that an owner might see are quite subtle and quite difficult to spot. They include things like weight loss, a reduction in the appetite, and sometimes an increase in thirst, an increased amount of urine produced, something which you may only notice if your cat uses a litter tray, for example. Essentially though, if you notice any change in your cat, particularly if it's getting older, if it seems to be slowing down and not in as good condition as it was in the past, it's well worth discussing that with your vet. Checkups are really important to make sure that you and your vet are doing the best for your cat. So, for example, things that it's very difficult for you as an owner to notice at home, like a small change in your cat's body weight, will be detected when your vet assesses your cat at their clinic. Other things as well which only a vet can do would include assessing a urine sample which tells us a lot about the condition of your cat and whether it has need for some additional treatments for example and also checking your cat's blood pressure which is very important because high blood pressure is common in cats with kidney disease. Unfortunately if a cat has CKD a lot of things can go wrong. But the good news is that there are treatments for many of these complications that can make a really enormous difference to your cat's quality of life and also its length of life. So all of the tests that are done are done with the aim of finding problems that can be corrected and which will make your cat lead a longer, happier and healthier life. If your cat has CKD or if your vet's concerned that CKD is a possibility then there are a number of tests that they'll want to try and assess the cat in more detail. So for example that will start with a history which is where your vet will ask you questions about your cat related to its thirst and appetite for example. They'll then also want to do a clinical examination to assess your cat in more detail. Also to look at its eyes for evidence of high blood pressure, which we can see when we look at the back of a cat's eye using a special lens. And also to measure the blood pressure itself using specialist equipment. Beyond that, also blood and urine tests will be required to confirm the diagnosis and also to look for some of the complications that can happen with that diagnosis. It's really important to have a good working relationship with your vet because between the two of you, you're going to achieve much more success if you're working together. You can provide a lot of information regarding what is at home, but your vet obviously can provide the specialist clinical information and together that's going to lead to the best care and the best management for your cat. The most common treatment recommended for CKD is a change of diet to a special renal prescription diet. However, there are other treatments that your cat may need depending on their own individual circumstances and that might be treatments that need to be mixed with the food or could be pills, for example. Well, not every cat is difficult to dose is the first important thing to say. Some cats are very straightforward to give a pill to, but it is important if you have any problems at all to always speak to your vet practice because one of the vets or one of the nurses will often be able to help you and give you some practical advice that can make medication easier. Some medicines are more palatable than others, so that's something else worth discussing with your vets. And also some can be mixed safely with the food, some it's okay to crush with the food. All these little things can help to make medication more straightforward. So I'm now going to demonstrate how to give a pill to your cat. And in general, if your cat doesn't dislike being pilled, this is the quickest and most reliable way of ensuring that they take their medication. If you find that your cat is difficult to pill, then talk to your vet about whether it's able to, for example, hide the pill in some food. The first thing to do is to make your hand into an arch shape and then place that over the top of your cat's head, holding the angles of the jaw with your thumb on one side and your fingers on the other. 
And you can actually be quite firm in your grip there because you're only pressing on bone. You're not going to cause your cat any pain or discomfort. Once you're in position with that, the next step is to pick up your pill. So we tip the cat's head backwards, use our finger to open the mouth, and then drop or push the pill to the back of the mouth before letting it go and allowing our cat's head to take a normal position where he can swallow. So having given the pill, we now ideally offer our cat something to eat or something to drink because that helps to take the pill from the throat down to the stomach. If our cat is not able to eat or doesn't want to eat, we can syringe a small volume of water into the side of our cat's mouth and that will help to take the pill down from the throat to the stomach. Feline Advisory Bureau's website, which is fabcats.org, my own website, catprofessional.com, which also has a links page with several other kidney related websites on that, and felinegood.co.uk. All of these websites have information which is orientated towards cat owners, so it will be in a language that you can understand. And lastly, there is a book which I wrote and it was published in 2008 called Caring for a Cat with Kidney Failure which is available through my own website and also through Amazon as a paperback book or an electronic book.